folks struggle with dialing in amps. And there are some things that I think I can share with you that will help you. First, I highly recommend you go look at my other video called um, How to Gain Stage and Level Your Presets. It's uh, maybe the best 16 minutes you'll spend in your life on this stuff. And that'll have a lot of good information in it. But I just want to talk specifically about the amp block here. First, there is, uh, we've got, I pulled up from the Naked Amps Tone Pack a Sir Badger 18 watt, and I've got the amp on um, the Y setting, which is the higher gain setting that I dialed in. And I'm, so in the, in the cabinet, I'm using a, an orange uh, V30 cab, which has a lot of bottom into it. I like this cab a lot, but you sort of need to cut the low end and also maybe some of the high end when you're playing it loud um, coming out of the amp. So I've cut that here. Um, that's another trick that you can do. But let's talk about the amp block. The Sir Badger 18 is a phenomenal amp. And a lot of the tone is going to depend on where you set this input drive and the master. These things really interact with each other. And what you're trying to do is get some distortion out of the input preamp side meshed with power amp tube distortion and there's a sweet spot in there that really makes amps sort of sing. Let me play this amp for a minute and you'll sort of <laughs> So that sounds like a pretty great amp, and it is. You can get a very different tone, though, out of the exact same amp. And I'm switching it back to the low gain setting. Same amp. And here's what it sounds like. <laughs> That's a much cleaner sound. Let's take a look at the difference between these two. So on this one, I have the input or preamp distortion dialed underneath the default, but I have the master cranked up pretty high. That's on the A setting, but when I go to the, the prior setting, I've got the input drive distorting more, and I've pulled the master back a little bit. So in each case, though, I had to sort of look at the level control after the fact to get it leveled right. Here, I've got it at minus 10 and a half. That pulls me out at minus 12 dB out of the unit itself. Even though this says it's at minus 10.6, it's really minus 12 dB on a meter. But when I did the other thing and raised the input and lowered the master, I had to raise the level up to compensate for the tone. That's something that you really need to understand when you dial in an amp to get it to interact with you. To get your tones to be consistent across preset levels, after you get your input and master fine, you need to get the level adjusted so that everything is still sort of coming out roughly at minus 12 dB. What are things you can do with an amp like this? I mean, I think it already sounds great, but there are all these tabs here, and I rarely use them. On this particular amp, on this front tab, I do use the cut because there's a lot of bass coming off the Sir Badger 18, particularly into that uh, cab that's the orange V30. On one, I took it off, but you'll notice on, on uh, Y, I put it on. Sometimes I'll play with the bright switch. The bright switch can add gain. The bright cap has a huge impact on not only just how bright it is, but the gain itself. Um, I tend to like mine a little lower than louder. I think it gets raspy and sharp higher depending on the amp. I don't usually fool with the fat switch unless the amp has a fat switch. Sometimes this boost is terrific. In front of an amp, let's hear what it sounds like in front of this Sure Badger, like this. Now I'm going to turn the boost on. So that's a huge difference. Uh, just adding that 10 dB straight clean boost right into the amp 
thickens it up and distorts it. And with some amps, it really sounds great. With some amps, it's too much. Notice you've got this little thing here where you can actually set this up to where it's uh, maybe a switch on your board. Um, on the X, uh, on the X8, you could turn the boost on and off per amp with a little push button. So that's a nice little trick. So um, I rarely touch the um, bright control. Um, this is either presence or high cut, depending on it. I usually fool with that. I don't usually touch the depth very much. And these things I tend to leave alone as well. Now, if I'm playing on single coils versus humbuckers, sometimes on a single coil, I'll pull this trim up a little bit. Not much. Maybe to 1.2 or 1.3, and that'll fatten up single coils going into it. A finishing touch that's really good. The second one is the GEQ. Um, there are many types of GEQ in, in, available, which is terrific. And, of course, this doesn't follow the real world. But I really like this five-band passive because it's just simple low, low, mid, mid, high, mid. Sometimes just pulling a little bit of the lows and pushing a little bit of the mids, not even more than a dB, really can change the character and the flavor of an amp. So let's see what that did to the sound. <laughs> lifts it up a little bit it's kind of like what you might be doing at a board if you were mixing this in a studio and that's a really great trick it, it's a little bit goes a long way because I think the cues on these are not narrow they're kind of wide so that's a really good one for you to look at there are plenty of others in here that give you some things there's a four band passive as well um, I like the passive ones but they're also constant cues if you want to do those at specific frequencies and to go back to zero, you just double click on the slider and it'll go right back to. Now, preamps, you can fool with the tube types. I tend to leave them alone, but sometimes it's fun to play with a different preamp tube. This is sort of a Mullard Marshall thing. Old Sylvania, old RCA, more modern JJs. If you really want to get experimental and fun, and you can, this can sound terrible or great, there's this tone stack type. And you can come in here and you can look at all these different tone stacks that you could put into this amp, and it'll sound different. So I have no idea what's gonna, what this is going to sound like, but let's put a, um, a Friedman small box tone stack in instead of the Sir Badger. So... And then back to the, def then back to the default. So it's different. It's just an interesting way you can do amps that don't exist in nature that way if you want to play with that. Under power amp, um, you can pick different tubes. This can be kind of fun. Um, I like to use this when I've got vintage amps and I like to play with things like the old Marshalls. I sometimes like the KT-66 and a JTM-45 rather than an EL-34. On the Bogners, I'll sometimes use an EL34 other than the 6L6, which is the model's version of it. And what, you'll, what it'll do, and you'll watch here, if you see all these things up here, I'll switch this, and you'll see just little changes in the um, settings, like the power amp hardness just changed on that when I switched it to that, or um, a power group. You know, there can be just a little change on something. Most of these are power amp hardnesses, it looks like. Uh, but that's what that does. On one of my amps, I moved the master volume location. Some people like to do this. Let's hear what that sounds like. Not much on this one. On others, it matters a lot. So, Power supply, um, sag can make a difference. So sometimes it's fun with if you like the Eddie Van Halen sound or you want to tighten it up, this is where your variac is. You can lower this to lower the voltage. More voltage, you can tell the difference in the sound. A little better. Usually you leave that alone. Speaker, this can be really powerful. You want to sort of, if you're using special cabinets, custom IRs, EBOT or whatever, you want to check what their resonant frequency is, and you want to usually do this about 10 above that. It can make a difference. You'll see this little peak move around. Um, for example, I've got in my uh, Cap Pack 17, I've got some 2x12s that are open back, 
and they actually have a lower frequency res. And if you leave it on 100, they don't sound right on the bottom end. And I really have to lower them down uh, to something like 80 or 85. And all of a sudden, the bottom sounds the way it's supposed to sound. I mean, you can also move this around and make it a little wider, a little more pronounced. The other thing that's kind of cool, I like this transformer match control. I think this is pretty great. Sometimes pulling that back a little bit will clean things up and make it bigger sounding. Speaker drive, I don't have any of it on here. There's going to be a new parameter in firmware 9, I think, that talks about speaker compression. Probably the more speaker compression you have that you turn up, the more you're going to have to turn your level up as well. It'll probably make it a little smaller, but let's turn it up a little bit here, maybe to two. All the way up to five. It compresses the sound a lot. If you like that, that's great, but you know. Some people like to play with that. And then there's Dynamics and uh, Page, this last one. And uh, I really like this preamp Dynamics. I like to add about 0.5 to 1, and it just seems to open up the amps for me a little bit. There's something about how the amp is more responsive to touch and things like that. I really like it. So. <laughs> Some people add a little output compression here. A little bit goes a long way. But honestly, I really believe that the um, default settings are great. Um, this, this page is where you really need to do all your work to get that amp to sound great, just like you had the amp in front of you. And the last thing I would really caution you is use your eyes... Uh, only to sort of get in the ballpark, but dial sounds in by your ears. Just because your favorite player has his bass and mid and treble set like this doesn't mean it's going to sound exactly like his. Uh, on Fender amps, sometimes they remember the old amps went from 0 to 12, so this 0 to 10 won't translate over exactly. So you kind of use the, your eyes to get you in the ballpark, but then move it around a little bit to kind of use your ears to lead you to where you really want to be. I dialed a lot of the clean sounds in on the Aikin and Tone Pack with my telly. One of the things you want to do is you want to keep the um, input drive down and turn the level up to get the sounds you want. And a lot of people make this mistake to keep turning up the input drive. To get a super clean sound, you just want to keep that down a lot. So like here's a super reverb. And, uh, and again, this is set for clean. So notice it's down to 1.93. <laughs> get it to still be loud I have to turn the level all the way up to 6.3 because the gain is down so much. Now one thing that's really great with these is when you use uh, a boost like uh, I like the RC boost. It'll uh, fatten your sound up really nice. Notice how the amp is very responsive to how hard I play. 